Hello everyone, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. In this video, Kavita ma'am is going to cover the static stabilization of the shoulder. If you want to check out other videos in the shoulder complex biomechanics, you can check out my link over here. There is a whole series where I have covered all the topics from kinematics to kinetics to introduction, everything. So you can check it out over here. And let's get started with this video. So hello everyone. So today we discuss factors that contribute to stability at the shoulder joint. Now basically you can divide these factors as static and dynamic. So by static we understand that it would be mostly with respect to the skeletal component as well as the capsular ligament com component. We are talking about inert structures that contribute to shoulder stability. And the dynamic component will be however supplied by our muscles. Okay. So when we come to static components, what are the major factors that contribute to shoulder stability? First you have the capsule, okay, which you all already know that it is a tight seal that surrounds the shoulder. So what is the function of the capsule? It kind of creates a negative intraarticular pressure that keeps the joint surfaces together. All right. The second one would be the orientation of the glenoid. Okay. So the glenoid is oriented slightly superiorly, so that prevents any kind of an inferior instability of the shoulder. Uh, we also have um, structures which contribute to a passive instability in uh, passive stability in terms of ligaments. You have the ligaments, major ligaments that surround the shoulder. So summarize, if you can just take the factors primarily as these. You have the capsule, the orientation of the glenoid and then the ligaments that surround the shoulder complex to contribute to static stability. Okay, so today we will be discussing static stability a little more in detail so that we fi find out how these factors contribute to shoulder stability. So now we are going to look uh, a little bit de in detail with these static factors. So as I mentioned um, static factors are those factors which uh, comprises of your inert capsular ligament structures which would uh, maintain stability at the shoulder. Okay, so let us imagine a situation where your ha hand or your arm is hanging by the side. All right. So when your arm is hanging by the side, what are the uh, what are the forces that might be acting on the hand, especially when it is unloaded? Okay, so you're not carrying any weight on the hand; it's unloaded, and then you keep your arm ha hanging by the side. Uh, one of the forces that is actually acting on in the inferior direction is the line of gravity. Okay, so this line of gravity. Uh, tends to act in the inferior direction and then it tends to pull the humerus down. Okay? So now you require an equal and opposite force uh, which is acting in the upward direction to kind of maintain equilibrium at the shoulder because if that equilibrium does not happen, what happens is that the humerus might translate in the downward direction. Now we all know that in ideal circumstances that does not happen because there should be an upward force which maintains equilibrium and offsets the inferior pull of gravity. Now most of the time, uh, so, so from studies that are already done at the shoulder, uh, the upward force could be supplied by muscles or it can be supplied by uh, your ligaments. right? So this upward force essentially if you check is not supplied by muscles because they have found that majority of the muscles at the shoulder are electrically silent when the arm is at rest or hanging by the side. So none of these muscles are actually functioning when you keep the arm at the side. So that means there has to be an upward force which is supplied by a structure which is essentially passive. All right. So what is this passive structure which is applying an upward force? That structure is called as the rotator cuff interval capsule. So rotator cuff interval capsule is a complex structure which is mainly comprised of your um, superior capsule, superior glenohumeral ligament and the coracohumeral ligament which is a passive structure and that kind of exerts a superior pull on the humerus. Okay, Since uh, this, this complex is majorly attached to the greater tubercle, it can exert a superior pull. Now you can see that the force vector of gravity acts in the downward direction and the superior force that is supplied, okay, the force vector of the superior force that is applied by the rotator cuff interval capsule is directed superiorly and medially. Okay. Now if you uh, resolve these force vectors by the parallelogram method, 
the resultant you know that is directed towards the center of the joint. So, you can see that the resultant of these two forces is directed towards the center of the joint and that is responsible for compressing the humeral head into the glenoid thus maintaining glenohumeral stability. So, as I mentioned early, earlier, so the main force that is supplying the superior uh, force to offset the inferior translatory force of the gravity is the uh, force that is supplied by the rotator cuff interval capsule. Now, in addition to that, do you require any other force to maintain stability at the shoulder? Obviously, we require the negative pressure that is supplied by the capsule which converts the joint into a tight seal. Uh, you also require the uh, you know contribution from the uh, you know the skeletal uh, I mean the bony orientation basically the superior tilt of the glenoid all that will also contribute to stability. But it is said that there is an another additional force that might actually contribute to uh, maintaining stability at the shoulder and that is basically the um, passive tension that is found in the supraspinatus muscle. Okay. So, the supraspinatus mu muscle is attached to the greater tubercle and uh, merges with the rotator cuff interval capsule. So, what happens? The, uh, the supraspinatus muscle is able to create some tension in the rotator cuff uh, interval capsule. When I say that, it does not mean that the supraspinatus muscle is active during unloaded and loaded uh, you know arm conditions it's not active when you keep the arm at the side but what i'm trying to say is that a passive tension is in the supraspinatus that is if it is uh, if it is attached to the greater tubercle tension within the muscle even at rest can create exert some pressure on the rotator cuff interval capsule and pull the humerus up Okay, so, that is why usually in patients with stroke and everything, uh, you know, you usually see that the shoulder subluxates in the inferior direction because you do not have any superior force to offset the force of gravity and eventually you develop shoulder uh, subluxation because the passive tension in the capsule as well as the passive tension in the supraspinatus muscle is usually lost in such conditions and then there is an inferior migration of the humeral head.